I decided I was never going to fall in love again. I was done with love. I was done with relationships. I was done with dating. I was never, ever, ever going to risk my heart again. People have asked me if a relationship that is broken can be fixed. Oh, I have been through this girl myself or gentleman or they or however you identify. I have been through this and oh, you want to fix it. You don't want to fix it. You're talking to all your friends. You're going to a subreddit, but you haven't talked to granny. So I'm going to tell you my experience with broken relationships and how to fix them or not, when you should and when you shouldn't, and what does, here's the real question, what does fix mean? Oh, as we used to say in the 60s, heavy. That relationship cannot be fixed. If you want, you can build a new relationship with the same person, but it has to be a new relationship with someone who just happens to live in the same body, but you may like. <laughs> so the thing is, if it's not a new relationship with the same person, you're going to end up in the same place. It's like driving into a wall, full speed, airbags deploy, cars towed away, you get a new car, you drive into the same wall again. No, 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 no. You want to make it different. If you're not ready to do that, then no, it can't be fixed. And you can just hear me talk about the rest of this so you can advise your friends because the one you're in, if you're not willing to work on it, over, sorry, have some pizza and have chocolate chocolate chip gelato on grandma. Here's what a new relationship means. New relationship means both of you change. Both of you. Or if like some of my friends, you're in a throuple, all three of you change. I haven't heard about a, is there a quad throuple? <laughs> I don't know if you're polyamorous and have multiple partners and you're not liking it, at least two of you are going to have to change. Whoever, Let me put it this way. Whoever is in the relationship is going to have to change. I have seen so many people make the mistake of, I'll change. I'll change. And when I change, it's going to be better. I've been too demanding or, you know, I didn't want to shave or whatever the thing was. And if I change, then it's going to be enough. It is not. Both of you have to want to change. And if you talk honestly to the other person about, are you willing to do the individual work to change in addition to our couple's work with our couple's therapist or however you choose to do that? And they say, no, not so much. I think it's all you, that's also, bye-bye. Here's the good news about a relationship where they say they're not going to do the work. Or uh, I heard Dean Graziano the other day use a phrase I hadn't heard before, self-learning. Oh, I love that. Self-learning. If both of you are not willing to do self-learning about what makes you act the way you do, and you say bye-bye, congratulations. Open some champagne, throw some confetti, have a party. When you get rid of somebody who's not willing to do the work, guess what? It's like cleaning out your closet. Marie Kondoing, old school Marie Kondoing your life. And now you've got room for somebody great to be where that old, it worked two seasons ago outfit used to be, but you never quite loved it. So you can just donate it, donate it to somebody else in the world. And that's going to make space for you to spend time on you and get ready for your next relationship. So now we're going to talk about changing your mindset. I, this week, I was married for 40 years. And I will tell you, yes, hooray, hooray. I will tell you that in my 20s, I looked at old people who sat at the old people tables when there was a wedding. And the old people tables are always in the back away from the music. And, you know, the old people are kind of dozing and they have uncomfortable shoes and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, the way you're married for 40 years is just, mm, you just motor like I'm one of those scooters. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. No. I mean, Pop Pops and I have had really, really, really hard times. So on my channel, I tell you stories and I tell you stories not because I'm vain, although I am sometimes vain when I'm not hating myself. It sort of goes back and forth. But this is one of my favorite marriage changing, long-term relationship changing stories. We had decided, absolutely decided we were going to get a divorce. That was it. We were going to get a divorce. But we were both working. Pop Pop's kids lived with us, or my kids too, really. And we had decided to do that, but we were broke. I mean, dude, I'm talking about hard budgeting. So we had decided we needed to get away, and we had purchased in advance a vacation in Cancun. It was like, okay. 
we've got this vacation coming up. We're going to get divorced. We already spent the money. We can't get a refund. I don't know. Maybe we should just go on vacation. So we go on vacation and this is some romantic little spot that's built in the hillside with eight levels and on it's open to nature. And on each level is just a little private pool. I don't know if it's still there. You can check it out. Ocho Cascades with a thatched roof. It was like all that. We thought, well, we are getting a divorce, but we're in this romantic place and we're running around naked all the time anyway. So maybe we should just enjoy each other. And this will be like a little interlude before we go back and get divorced. And by the second day, we'd completely forgotten we were going to get divorced. <laughs> You're not going to get divorced. We are going to get back in the pool. So sometimes you just need a moment to have a mind shift. And you also need to accept that it's never the same. We are completely different people than who we were. When we got married, I was 30 and had decided never to get married again. Pop Pops was 39. I have some things in common with that young woman. I have some things in common with the 20-year-old that I used to be that you are now, but also I've changed and he's changed, and that's going to happen. In 15th century Japan, the emperor had a piece of pottery, probably a teacup, I'm not sure, that he dropped, and it broke. He loved it, and he was really bummed. Well, if you're emperor, there are always people ready to do things for you. You know, it's like, I would like to be a czarina, right? Or an empress. Was there not a celebrity that sucks, but you know, to have people running to do it. I think. I don't who knows. Anyway, he dropped it, it broke. They sent it off for repair and it came back and it looked awful. So he sent it to some of his finest craftspeople and they said, you know what? What we're gonna do is fix it with liquid gold. And they took the pieces that were broken and put them back together with gold. And so the phrase was developed and it's now a whole philosophy and you can find images. I, actually, I will I will give um, you a link in the descriptor box below called Kintsugi and it's called Beautiful Scars. Ah, I love that. Along the way, when you are privileged to live a long time, you're going to get some scars. And what you learn is that your scars are what make you beautiful and relationship scars make you beautiful. And the idea of Kintsugi is that anything that has been broken can be treated with enough love, attention, and artistry to become more beautiful. My marriage is more beautiful than it was the day I got married. The day I got married, I had like these hate the ideas about what marriage was. Now I know. And there are so many cracks and themes that it's like, whoa. And then the job of Kintsugi is, can I make it more beautiful? Can I take myself to Ocho Cascades? Can I find something that makes that which is broken more beautiful, not despite it being broken, not despite it being broken, but because it was broken, because it is broken, it is more beautiful. And that's how you have a beautiful life and a beautiful relationship. Let's think about what your goal is in fixing this relationship that you're wondering about. The goal is not, we've talked about this, not to have the relationship you had before. The goal is to move forward and have something more beautiful. You can't do that if any of the, these things are true. If you are feeling like a victim, if deep in your gut you feel like a victim, don't want to fix it. Not worth the self-learning. You want to know why you feel like a victim, but the dynamic you have with that person is not right for the healing you need to do to not feel like a victim. So on that one, I would say, I'm not sure it's worth the effort. Hating the other person takes so much energy to hate. Whoa. I mean, I know people who have hated their exes for 20 years. That energy could be put to better use. And I have another story. The opposite of love is that hate. The opposite of love is indifference. You're just indifferent. And I was like, yeah, good on them. I hope they have a nice life. It's like all the statements that Hollywood publicists put out when somebody breaks up. Oh, somebody is wonderful. And I wish them everything good. You want to try to feel that way instead of make it? So I knew it worked. Y'all know I, I, my first marriage was not right for either of us. And I knew for sure that I reached a good point when, I don't know, it was maybe 10 years after we split up. I was in an office building and I thought, oh, I could go say hi to him. And I couldn't remember his last name, just blanked on his last name. And it was, didn't matter anymore. And I thought, 
well, that is crazy. You know, that was my last name for eight years and it just went out of my head and I thought, hooray for me, right? I have reached indifference. There's no anger left. So if you're still feeling hate, you want to get out of there and you want to bring your temperature down, you want to bring it down. I decided I was never going to fall in love again. I was done with love. I was done with relationships. I was done with dating. I was never, ever, ever going to risk my heart again because it just hurt too much, right? And I could see everything that had gone wrong. I could see how it hurt me. It hurt him. It hurt my family. It was just ow, 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 ow. Like everybody looked like they'd been in a car wreck. And so I swore off love. Honestly, uh, that I was in my 20s when I swore off love and that lasted, oh, maybe six months. <laughs> but... I will tell you that swearing off love is not the answer. What you want to start with is, I, uh, and this is, I'm sorry to say it because I am still working on it and it's all over YouTube and I don't know how to do it yet. So it's a journey we will take together. When you learn to love yourself just a little bit more, you know, it sounds like self-love sounds like I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. I'm going to love myself. And I, you know, when I love myself, I'm not going to see all these things in myself that I don't like. I, I'm kind of thinking that. I, I don't, I don't think that's true. You know, even the Dalai Lama has bad days. Picking out his tongue. Did you guys read about that? So anyway, the goal is to love yourself maybe 5% more. And they're all kind of tools to help you to do that. When you get to the point when you can find some good in yourself and you can find some good in either the person you broke up with or somebody new, then that melts into the liquid gold of Kintsugi. That's the liquid gold gold that you pour into the cracks of yourself and the cracks of the relationship. And that's where beauty comes from. And so when I think about relationships now, I think about Kintsugi and I think, okay, can a relationship be fixed once broken? Maybe if it's worth it. And if it's worth the process of beautiful scars, of beautiful scars, and that's how you'll know. So that's it about broken relationships from granny, except if that resonates for you, please subscribe. I, I love you. I need you to love me back because otherwise I can't get the energy I need to keep doing videos and to be there for you. I know if you still have a granny, she's telling you what I'm telling you. Call your granny. Call your granny. Call your granny. Zoom your granny. FaceTime your granny. Did you get arrested? I haven't heard from you. I've been sitting here waiting my phone for two weeks. Why do you never call? Why do you never text? I need to hear from you. So subscribe.